Vladimir Sviatoslavic the Great was a prince of Novgorod, Grand Prince of Kiev, and ruler of Kievan Rus from 980 to 1015. Vladimir's father was Prince Sviatoslav of the Rurik dynasty. After the death of his father in 972, Vladimir, who was then Prince of Novgorod, was forced to flee to Scandinavia in 976 after his brother Yaropok had murdered his other brother Oleg and conquered Rus. In Sweden, with the help from his relative Ladigil Hayen Kunsai Gerdsen, ruler of Norway, he assembled a Varangian army and reconquered Novgorod from Yaropok. By 980 Vladimir had consolidated the Kievan realm from modern-day Ukraine to the Baltic Sea and had solidified the frontiers against incursions of Bulgarian, Baltic, and Eastern nomads. Originally a follower of Slavic paganism, Vladimir converted to Orthodox Christianity in 988 and Christianized the Kievan Rus. Rise to the throne, born in 958, Vladimir was the natural son and youngest son of Sviatoslav I of Kiev by his housekeeper Malusha. Malusha is described in the Norse sagas as a prophetess who lived to the age of 100 and was brought from her cave to the palace to predict the future. Malusha's brother Dobrynaya was Vladimir's tutor and most trusted advisor. Hagiographic tradition of dubious authenticity also connects his childhood with the name of his grandmother, Olga Prekrasa, who was Christian and governed the capital during Sviatoslav's frequent military campaigns. His place of birth is identified by different authors either as Budiatiki or Budnik. Transferring his capital to Pereyoslavets in 969, Sviatoslav designated Vladimir ruler of Novgorod the Great but gave Kiev to his legitimate son Yaropok. After Sviatoslav's death in 972, a fratricidal war erupted in 976 between Yaropok and his younger brother Oleg, ruler of the Drevlians. In 977 Vladimir fled to his kinsman Hoak on Sigurdsson, ruler of Norway, collecting as many Norse warriors as he could to assist him to recover Novgorod. On his return the next year, he marched against Yaropok. On his way to Kiev he sent ambassadors to Rogvulod, Prince of Politsk, to sue for the hand of his daughter Rognida. The high-born princess refused to affiance herself to the son of a bondswoman, so Vladimir attacked Politsk, slew Rogvulod, and took Ragnhild by force. Politsk was a key fortress on the way to Kiev and capturing Politsk and Smolensk facilitated the taking of Kiev in 978, where he slew Yaropok by treachery and was proclaimed Nyas of all Kivan Rus. Years of pagan rule, Vladimir continued to expand his territories beyond his father's extensive domain. In 981, he seized the Chervan towns from the Poles. In 981-982 he suppressed a Vyataki rebellion. In 983, he subdued the Ayat Vingans. In 984, he conquered the Radimichs. And in 985, he conducted a military campaign against the Volga Bulgars, planting numerous fortresses and colonies on his way. Although Christianity spread in the region under Oleg's rule, Vladimir had remained a thoroughgoing pagan, taking 800 concubines and erecting pagan statues and shrines to gods. He may have attempted to reform Slavic paganism by establishing the thunder god, Peron, as a supreme deity. Open abuse of the deities that most people in Rus revere triggered widespread indignation. A mob killed the Christian Fyodor and his son Iwan. Immediately after the murder of Fyodor and Iwan, early medieval Rus saw persecutions against Christians, many of whom escaped or concealed their belief. However, Prince Vladimir mused over the incident long after, and not least for political considerations. According to the early Slavic chronicle called Tale of Bygone Years, which describes life in Kiev in Rus up to the year 1110, he sent his envoys throughout the civilized world to judge firsthand the major religions of the time, Islam, Roman Catholicism, Judaism, and Byzantine Orthodoxy. They were most impressed with their visit to Constantinople, saying, we knew not whether we were in heaven or on earth a euro we only know that God dwells there among the people, and their service is fairer than the ceremonies of other nations. Christianization of the Kivan Rus The primary chronicle reports that in the year 987, after consultation with his boyars, 
Vladimir the Great sent envoys to study the religions of the various neighboring nations whose representatives had been urging him to embrace their respective faiths. The result is described by the chronicler Nestor. Of the Muslim Bulgarians of the Volga the envoys reported there is no gladness among them, only sorrow and a great stench. He also reported that Islam was undesirable due to its taboo against alcoholic beverages and pork. Vladimir remarked on the occasion, drinking is the joy of all Rus. We cannot exist without that pleasure. Ukrainian and Russian sources also described Vladimir consulting with Jewish envoys and questioning them about their religion, but ultimately rejecting it as well, saying that their loss of Jerusalem was evidence that they had been abandoned by God. His emissaries also visited Roman Catholic and Orthodox missionaries. Ultimately Vladimir settled on Orthodox Christianity. In the churches of the Germans his emissaries saw no beauty. But at Constantinople, where the full festival ritual of the Byzantine church was set in motion to impress them, they found their ideal, we no longer knew whether we were in heaven or on earth, they reported, describing a majestic divine liturgy in Hagia Sophia, nor such beauty, and we know not how to tell of it. If Vladimir was impressed by this account of his envoys, he was even more attracted by the political gains of the Byzantine alliance. In 988, having taken the town of Shishanizos in Crimea, he boldly negotiated for the hand of Emperor Basil II's sister, Anna. Never before had a Byzantine imperial princess, and one born in the purple at that, married a barbarian, as matrimonial offers of French kings and German emperors had been peremptorily rejected. In short, to marry the 27-year-old princess to a pagan Slav seemed impossible. Vladimir was baptized at Shishanizos, however, taking the Christian name of Basil out of compliment to his imperial brother-in-law. The sacrament was followed by his wedding to Anna. Returning to Kiev in triumph, he destroyed pagan monuments and established many churches, starting with a church dedicated to Saint Basil, and the Church of the Tithes. Arab sources both Muslim and Christian, present a different story of Vladimir's conversion. Yeaya of Antioch, al-Rudawari, al-Makin, al-Damashki, and Ibn al-Athar all give essentially the same account. In 987, Barbas Skouris and Barbas Phokas revolted against the Byzantine emperor Basil II. Both rebels briefly joined forces, but then Barbas Phokas proclaimed himself emperor on September 14, 987. Basil II turned to the Kivan Rus for assistance, even though they were considered enemies at the time. Vladimir agreed, in exchange for a marital tie. He also agreed to accept Christianity as his religion and to Christianize his people. When the wedding arrangements were settled, Vladimir dispatched 6,000 troops to the Byzantine Empire, and they helped to put down the revolt. Christian reign Vladimir then formed a great council out of his boyars and set his twelve sons over his subject principalities. According to the primary chronicle, he founded the city of Belgorod in 991. In 992 he went on a campaign against the Croats, most likely the white Croats that lived on the border of modern Ukraine. This campaign was cut short by the attacks of the Peshnegs on and around Kiev. In his later years he lived in a relative peace with his other neighbors, Boleslav I of Poland, Stephen I of Hungary, and Andrzej the Czech. After Anna's death, he married again, likely to a granddaughter of Otto the Great. In 1014 his son Yaroslav the Wise stopped paying tribute. Vladimir decided to chastise the insolence of his son and began gathering troops against him. Vladimir fell ill, however, most likely of old age, and died at Berestovo near Kiev. The various parts of his dismembered body were distributed among his numerous sacred foundations and were venerated as relics. Family. The fate of all Vladimir's daughters, whose number is around nine, is uncertain. A lava or a loja, speculative she might have been mother of Vyshlav while others claim that it is a confusion with Helena Lekatna Vyshlav, Prince of Novgorod. A widow of Yaropokai, a Greek nun. Sviatopok the Accursed, possibly the surviving son of Yaropok. Rognida, later upon divorce she entered a convent taking the Christian name of Anastasia, at Saislava Politsk, 979, Kiev, Prince of Politsk, Yaroslav the Wise, Prince of Rostov, 
Prince of Novgorod, Grand Prince of Kiev. Possibly he was a son of Anna rather than Rugnida. Another interesting fact that he was younger than Sviatopolk according to the words of Boris and the tale of bygone years and not as it was officially known. Also the fact of him being the Prince of Rostov is highly doubtful although not discarded. Vsevulod, possibly the Swedish Prince Wisewald of Volin, was perhaps the first husband of Istrid Svenstata, Mstislav, other Mstislav that possibly died as an infant if he was ever born, Mstislav of Chernigov, Prince of Tmtrakan, Prince of Chernigov. Other sources claim him to be son of other mothers, Predslava, a concubine of Bolesai I. Krobri according to Jester Principum Polinorum, Premislava some source state that she was a wife of the Duke Laszlo the Bald of Updians, Mstislava, in 1018 was taken by Bolesai I. Krobri among the other daughters. Bulgarian Adela, some sources claim that Adela is not necessarily Bulgarian as Boris and Gleb were born from some other wife, Boris, Prince of Rostov. Remarkable is the fact that Rostov Principality as well as the Principality of Murom used to border the territory of Volga Bulgars, Gleb, Prince of Murom, as Boris, Gleb is being also claimed the son of Anna Porfira Genita, Stanislav, Prince of Smolensk, possible of another wife and a fate of whom is not certain, Sudislav, Prince of Pskov, possible of another wife, but he is mentioned in Nikon's Chronicles. He spent 35 years in prison and later before dying turned into a monk. Malfrida, Sviatoslav, Prince of Drevlians. Anna Porfira Genita, Theophana, a wife of Novgorod Posebnik Ostromir, a grandson of semi-legendary Dobrynaya. A granddaughter of Otto the Great, Maria Dobroniega of Kiev, the Duchess of Poland, married around 1040 to Casimir I the Restorer, Duke of Poland, Agatha a theoretical daughter according to Jet. Other possible family, an out-of-marriage daughter, a wife of the Nordmark Margrave Bernard, Posvised, a son of Vladimir according to Huston Chronicles. He, possibly, was the Prince Chrysok here mentioned by Nikitas Koniates. Significance and Legacy The Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox churches celebrate the feast day of St. Vladimir on July 15. The town Volodymy Volinsk in northwestern Ukraine was founded by Vladimir and is named after him. The foundation of another town, Vladimir in Russia, is usually attributed to Vladimir Monomak. However some researchers argue that it was also founded by Vladimir the Great. St. Volodymy's Cathedral, one of the largest cathedrals in Kiev, is dedicated to Vladimir the Great, as was originally the University of Kiev. The Imperial Russian Order of St. Vladimir and St. Vladimir's Orthodox Theological Seminary in the United States are also named after him. The memory of Vladimir was also kept alive by innumerable Russian folk ballads and legends, which refer to him as Krasno Solomishko. The Varangian period of Eastern Slavic history ceases with Vladimir, and the Christian period begins. The appropriation of Kivan Rus as part of national history has also been a topic of contention in Ukrainophile versus Russophile schools of historiography since the Soviet era. Equals gallery equals. See also. List of Russian rulers, list of Ukrainian rulers, family life and children of Vladimir I list of people known as the Great, St. Vladimir Monument, Prince Vladimir, Russian animated feature film. References. Golden. P.B. Russ. Encyclopedia of Islam. Eds P. Behrman, T.H. Byank, C.E. Bosworth, E. Van Donzel and W.P. Heinrichs. Brill. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, Ed. Encyclopedia Britannica. Cambridge University Press. Some historical analysis and political insights on the state affairs of Vladimir the Great, Moss, Walter G. A History of Russia Volume I, to 1917 inches. Notes <laughs>